Ukraine is currently slated to receive an undisclosed number of the French AMX-10 RC, a 16-ton six-wheeled armored vehicle with a 105mm turret slapped on top. If Napoleon had the AMX-10, he would have easily captured Moscow. During a public statement, French President Emmanuel Macron proudly announced that, quote, these are the first Western-made tanks that will be handed over to Ukraine. But see, the wheeled AMX-10 isn't technically a tank, so what is it exactly? And how is it supposed to be used in combat? What are its strengths and weaknesses? Does it come standard with an escargo and baguette MRE? Let's find out. But first, you guys really need to check out Curiosity Stream. It's like Netflix for nerds, Hulu for history buffs, or OnlyFans for scientists. Their documentaries teach you about military history, technology, science, nature, travel, music, and much more. I watched their doc called Machinery of War about logistics. It goes into great detail about how resupply is a vital, often overlooked component of warfare. Curiosity Stream adds new shows like this every week, allowing you to stay up to date with the latest information. They produce exclusive, award-winning films and shows that you can't watch anywhere else. Plus, you get access to their deep collection of the best documentaries from around the world. Their films are part of what inspired me to start creating entertaining, informative videos. I see it as investing in yourself so you can increase your knowledge for a very affordable price. You can go to curiositystream.com slash task purpose or scan the QR code for unlimited access available to watch on all of your favorite streaming devices or the web. And for our fans, use promo code TASKPURPOSE to save 25% off. Click the link below or go to curiositystream.com slash taskpurpose and save 25% now. The AMX-10RC, by most Western standards, falls into the modern categories of an armored reconnaissance or infantry support vehicle. According to its initial NATO classification in the 1980s, it was officially a heavy armament combat vehicle, rather than a light tank, primarily due to its lack of tracks, which would make it a literal tank, and the fact that it doesn't carry additional infantry, which would make it an infantry fighting vehicle. Using its 250 horsepower, 115 2 supercharged engine gives it an insanely high max speed of 85 kilometers per hour, or almost 53 miles per hour on road, and on paper, its operational range is 1,000 kilometers, or 620 miles, blowing any vehicle out of the water in terms of distance that this thing can cover on a single tank of gas. It might seem like a weird keyboard warrior semantic thing to worry about how to classify this vehicle, but it's actually kind of important because the classification helps us make some predictions on how it will perform on the battlefield in Ukraine. You don't want your soldiers using it to do tank things if it's not a tank. Maybe we can get that guy to make a documentary called What is a Tank? The development history and combat track record of the AMX vehicle helps us understand how Ukraine will deploy it. The AMX-10 was initially designed in the 1970s at the Atelier de Construction Ici Le Monio as a replacement for the Panhard EBR armored car. The Panhard had served in France extensively in the African conflicts, such as the Algerian Civil War in the 1950s and 1960s. It was from these lessons that spawned the creation of the AMX-10RC. RC does not stand for remote control, it stands for Rules Cannon, or Wheeled Gun. It was initially built to fill the role of the armored reconnaissance as a tank destroyer. The original tactic and doctrine for the vehicle was to be fast enough to get around the flank of enemy tanks and hit them from their vulnerable side. But this idea was nixed pretty quickly because the original 105mm gun was insufficient to take on newer Soviet main battle tanks. Its armored recon role, however, stuck around, and it has been successfully filling the occupation since its adoption in 1979. The vehicle is overall beloved by the French military by all accounts, and has seen extensive use in every French conflict since 1982. In that year, during ongoing operations in the country of Chad during Operation Manta, where French forces with their newly minted AMX-10RC would eventually push Libyan forces out of the country. It would continue to see action by French troops across the African continent, leading other African nations such as Morocco to adopt it into their own armies. Where it truly earned its stripes was in 1991 during the Gulf War, where two French regiments operating the AMX-10RC were protecting the entire western flank of coalition forces as a screening element. They were reported to have reached their objective in less than one day while defeating an entire Iraqi infantry division, destroying 20 tanks, and they seized Al Salman airfield, all without losing a single vehicle. France's success was so overwhelming that it helped spur a total reorganization of the American army to focus on a smaller, faster, more independent formation, in part 
leading to the creation of the brigade combat team model and the eventual adoption of the striker platform. The other point of view is that it wasn't truly a good analogy or test of the AMX against an armored opponent since the Iraqi military was reportedly poorly trained and without sufficient maintenance or resupply. But the AMX 10 RC would eventually go on to see conflict in Bosnia, the Ivory Coast, Kosovo, Afghanistan, and more recently in Mali, where the French army conducted a modern-day blitzkrieg against ISIS-backed rebel groups across the northern half of the country, a charge largely led by the AMX-10RC itself. While the AMX bolsters an impressive track record and reputation, some analysts claim that it's not the best thing to be sending up against the Russians, pointing to drawbacks of the system that might cause issues in Ukraine. The first major drawback is the turret's lack of stabilization. Most armored vehicles you see on the battlefield these days have gun stabilization, meaning that regardless of the angle of the hull as it moves, the turret remains pointed at the same target. This means that the AMX lacks the ability to accurately fire on the move, and will need to come to a full stop in order to effectively engage targets. Its second drawback comes from older models that could possibly find their way to Ukraine, are equipped with older F3 cannons instead of the G2 cannons, meaning that they would not be able to use standard NATO supplied ammunition, only the proprietary fancy French rounds, which could hinder logistics not allowing ammunition to be easily shared across formations, and that these 105mm rounds are not large enough to be effective against heavier Russian armor found like the T-72 and T-80s. Looking at the turret system, modern AMX-10s run the manually loaded, full-pressure rifled 105mm G2 cannon. I do want to point out that I've seen some conflicting information on whether or not the G2 cannon was implemented. Older F2 cannons use proprietary ammunition, while the G2 is able to fire all NATO rounds, including heat, sabo, armor piercing. According to this document on Nexstar's website, they offer four different types of munitions for the AMX-10, with ranges varying from 1500 to 3,000 meters and a muzzle velocity of up to 1,400 meters per second. Some have pointed out that if you look at the battlefield successes of the AMX, you'll find that the vast majority of these battles were conducted in large, open, arid environments against under-equipped forces in Africa and the Middle East. But the AMX 10RC was specifically designed for these environments as the French needed combat support where they have historically fought in small African conflicts, but Ukraine is an entirely different fight. Wheeled vehicles are notorious for becoming stuck in wet, muddy conditions, which with the eventual coming of the spring in Ukraine will be a majority of the areas it's expected to operate within. Wheels have high ground pressure, meaning that the weight of the hull is entirely on the point of the wheel that is touching the ground, as opposed to tank tracks where it's spread out over a larger distance. This means that the AMX-10 could be largely restricted to roads or built up terrain and urban environments. While this is by no means a deal breaker, it can create some tactical limitations that we need to keep in mind. The idea behind armored recon or CAV is to be sent forward of the main heavy armor units, serving as a kind of scouting vehicle and as a screening element on the flanks of larger formations. Using its 105mm cannon to hold off enemy flanking elements, giving the main body time to react. France, unlike many NATO countries, heavily favors smaller formations with lightly armored vehicles that have giant guns. This is largely because of their extensive and continuous operations in Africa, specifically in the country of Mali, where the fighting tends to be unconventional rather than large armies against each other over large spans of dry, flat ground. That said, the AMX-10 as a product of the Cold War was still designed with the Soviets in mind. This is why it was designed to have a triple heavy penetration rating with its main cannon, which was designed to inflict fatal shots on the T-55 and T-62 tanks. Ukrainian Defense Minister Oleski Reznikov tweeted on January 12th applauding the French decision to send the armored vehicles. Even though the number is undisclosed, we know from Military Balance report that a total of 457 of these vehicles were produced over its lifetime, 245 remain in service in France, and 98 were sold to foreign nations, with the rest in warehouses somewhere. That's not a lot of vehicles 
vehicles to pull from, right? I would be happily surprised if they're able to send more than 50 based on that stockpile. That'd be like 20% of their active inventory. On the other hand, these are old armored vehicles for France, and they're looking to upgrade to a new vehicle, so they might not mind getting rid of them. French Armed Forces Minister Sebastien Lecornu said the AMX would arrive quickly within two months, so by March of 2023. We'll also have to account for the fact that Russian Defense Minister already claimed that four American Bradley IFEs were destroyed before they even made it to Ukraine, so I'm assuming that at least five French AMXs have probably been destroyed by Russia before they made it there? Boy, that escalated quickly. At the same time, Russian propagandists like Putin loyalist Vladimir Solovnov said on state TV in Russia, quote, Macron supplies the tanks and we give them a preemptive strike against France as a party to the conflict. However, they failed to explain exactly how they would conduct a preemptive strike against a NATO country over 3,800 miles away from their border. But could Russia retaliate in some other way with some kind of economic weapon? The French government has been preparing for a total cutoff of gas supplies from Russia for a while now. About 17% of France's gas imports come from Russia, which means it's less dependent on Russia for energy than its neighbor Germany. Although French finance minister Bruno Le Marie said that they may need to begin construction on a new infrastructure piece like a floating plant that would be able to regasify liquid natural gas shipments from overseas. It typically costs about $20 billion to build an onshore or facility like this. France can happily donate the AMX tank without worrying about retaliation from Russia because their energy economies are not as intertwined. After the AMX adoption into the full French military, it was integrated into infantry formations as a mobile gun system, taking on longer range targets, buildings, enemy fortifications, and lightly armored threats. If you're unable to call in air support, like is often the case in Ukraine, this vehicle is going to be a huge asset. It's useful in one place that has quickly become a taboo for tanks. I'm talking, of course, about urban terrain. Yes, tanks have a reputation for being highly vulnerable in cities, but if you're gonna try to recapture towns held by Russia, you're gonna need armor like the AMX. The fact that the vehicle is wheeled gives it an excellent maneuverability to react to targets and to seek cover when needed in urban environments, more so than any tracked vehicle. It comes with a crew of four, which includes your driver, commander, loader, and gunner. It's relatively small small footprint of 9 meters long and 2.6 meters high means that it provides a reduced, more easily camouflaged target, much smaller than the American equivalent of the Bradley or Stryker MGS vehicles. The engine is protected by an armored steel and aluminum hull capable of stopping up to 20 millimeter munitions from 300 meters away. With frontal armor specifically able to defeat 30 millimeter AP rounds, similar to what is fired by the Russian BMP. The vehicle also comes with the option of a Sepier protection package. This is an optional six ton additional armor kit, specifically designed to counter IEDs or explosive mines, which have unfortunately become commonplace on the Ukrainian battlefield. Modern AMX-10 RCs also come standard with your typical turret-mounted smoke grenades to instantly obscure its position, but these smoke launchers have a trick up their sleeve that you don't typically see with armored vehicles. The crew has the option of switching smoke grenades with high explosive grenades, which would be used to clear the immediate area around the vehicle of targets, or for the crew to play a fun little prank on the infantry guys outside. <laughs> Wait, um, stop. The modern AMX is also equipped with an infrared flare as a form of active self-protection. This is a more unique feature of the AMX-10. While most active protection systems attempt to destroy the incoming guided munition before it has a chance to impact the vehicle, this infrared flare acts in the same way a flare would in an aircraft, shooting out around the vehicle as a way to confuse the guidance system with multiple heat signatures at once. Its six road wheels operate with hydro pneumatic suspension, allowing the driver to raise or lower the overall height of the vehicle or tilt in one direction or the other, allowing it to maximize use for cover or to help compensate for harder to reach targets. These wheels also use the concept of skid steering, with wheels spinning at different speeds in order to turn the vehicle left or right rather than simply steering, allowing for the vehicle to spin 360 degrees while staying in the same spot, just like a track tank can. In addition to funky steering capabilities, the tire pressure can be electronically raised or lowered in order for the driver to compensate for whatever terrain the vehicle finds itself in. 
higher pressure for roads, lower pressure for sand and mud. The commander also has access to the battlefield management system that has a similar function to the American FBCB2, providing real-time battlefield updates and GPS tracking across the entire formation. The announcement also comes during a time when the French are already beginning to replace their AMX-10 RC fleet with the EBRC Jaguar, making the war in Ukraine an easy excuse to clear out old stock and inventory, as some critics would point out. But all of this can largely be ignored with the idea of tank is better than no tank. Or I guess in this case, AMX-10 is better than no AMX-10. It's interesting to note that historically speaking, France was on the forefront of trying to help improve relations with Russia over the past few decades. They even surprisingly in 2010 made the news by signing the first major arms deal between Russia and a Western country since World War II. France agreed to sell Mistral-class amphibious assault ships to Russia for 675 million euros. You have to remember how different the attitude was by the Western world towards Russia at that time, when it seemed like relations were improving like never before. But the deal was criticized at that time as being against the security interests of Poland, Ukraine, and the Baltic states. And in 2015, France finally put a halt to that planned sale after Russia annexed Crimea in eastern Ukraine. Ultimately, the Ukrainians are better off having these vehicles than not having them. Some argue that certain weapon systems should not go to war due to their age or lack of certain capability, but at the end of the day, the most important thing to consider is battlefield employment of these vehicles. Its mind-boggling range of 1,000 kilometers means that it can go long spans of time without needing logistical support, and being a wheeled design rather than tracked reduces overall maintenance. Ultimately, the AMX-10RC is another tool in the Ukrainians' toolbox for defeating the Russians, and its effectiveness will all come down to the tactics that are used. Let us know what you think about the systems in the comments. Make sure to subscribe and like this video if you found it valuable in some way, and check out this video if you have a chance. I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy. Thank you for watching.